Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogwood 33 and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the New Order Last Days of Europe as Tomsk. Now, in the last video, we started prepping for the Siberian Black Army now that they're at war with the People's Revolutionary Council. So we have about, where is it? We have about 11 days left before it's go time. 10 days left until it's go time. Nine days left until it's going. I'm, I'm probably not going to count down. But you get the idea. We got, we're getting time. They're starting to push into Tanutuva, but, yeah. Ooh. A surprising new radio serial has been developed by a collective of Bastelard producers in the town of Stratsevoy, entitled Welcome to Dolina Nochi. It has become one of the most de uh, divisive entertainment products to have ever come out of re airwaves in recent years. The serial set in the small town of Donila Nochi, a former mill town on the Ob River, which is now centered around a bicycle factory, it follows the daily going ons of the town's inhabitants. Boris the foreman, Darla, or Daria, the school teacher, Oliona and Artyom, the factory workers, and so on. However, Dolina Nochi is much stranger than appearances might initially seem. The series depicts it almost exist as depicts it as almost existing in a bubble, seemingly free from Russia's divisions and turmoil. More of the town folks seem to be constantly afflicted by supernatural occurrences. A vast glowing cloud appears above these kindergarten before becoming the principal. A five-headed dragon is arrested by the local police for committing fraud. A strange force on the outskirts of town begins whispering to residents to join it. The absurdism of Welcome to Do Olina Nochi is contrasted against the seemingly repetitive nature of its plots, which are unnervingly normal given the circumstances. This has made the serial especially controversial, as the show constantly veers between mind-numbing boredom and surreal horror. Some decry it as bizarre and meaningless, while devoted fans gather in cafes to compare notes and share theories. One particularly noteworthy bit of speculation is that the entire town exists in a time loop. Others say that it's a dream, or that the town is in fact located in the American Southwest. Or perhaps all three. With Welcome Doli to Dolina Nochi, no one really knows. There's a thin, semantic line separating weird and beautiful, and that line is covered in jellyfish. Dolina Nochi, is that Twilight Zone? Come on. Elena Nochi. Translation. English. Valley of Night. Kind of like the Twilight Zone, I guess. Valley of Night. That's a zone where Twilight exists in. I, I see you, devs. Taking the first steps towards reuniting Great Britain. There we go. Jolly good. The Siberian Black Army is... Well, they're working on all of that. That's right. How long do we have? Five days. Just hold on. Hold on. People's Revolutionary Council. Hold on and we shall free you. From yourselves. Oh, they're moving into... Kaisel? There we go. Okay. It's go time. March. March. Okay, so Mar is finally taking out uh, Tartarstan. Uh, WRRF are working on Latetsk. Auto save. Don't scare me like that. I haven't had a game. I haven't had the game crash on me at all. But it always seems like it will. So that's kind of scary to me. Uh, what are they doing up there? Um, shit. Let's work 
capacity. Is there anything for efficiency of the factories? Industrial capacity. That works. Let's streamline the local, uh, the focal production facilities. It's very focal in what they're talking about. Decisions available. I'm already doing a war plane right now, so we gotta we can just chill out and doing anything quite yet. War is hell. Alright, um... Okay. We'll do the classic Russian strategy of just driving right into the capital. And just assume that they don't have any troops in there. It seems like they've more or less just consolidated their forces in fighting and dealing with us. Which is probably the wise move, don't get me wrong. Like, I can respect the strategy, but it makes things a lot more hard for me. No, don't fight them. No, 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 no. Okay, we gotta hope we can outrun them. Please, God. Oh, no, you don't. Stop him. Fuck, okay, that didn't work. But if we let them go into there, that might work for us. You stop them from going anywhere. It won't. Okay, they that's gonna take like three days for them to go. But if we can hold out for a while. That's all that I think matters. Okay. More artillery. In fact, I'm thinking we hold off on doing the whole 20 widths right now. We'll just do that. Fuck, okay. Our, our cars are getting pushed back. How the fuck? These fucking anarchists don't even know how to run a fucking country, but they can put up a fight? What the fuck? Oh, you don't believe in centralized authority, shitheads! Okay, delete that. We don't care about these guys. All of you. All of you. Focus on that. Fuck, oh, come on. Okay, can I see the troop things? Can I see where the enemy troops are, please? No? Okay. I guess I, I'll just go in fucking blind. And I have no, no idea where anyone is. What the fuck? Okay, um... Looks like they're pushing back to Kanst. Oh, I guess there's still people there. I wouldn't know because the fucking thing disappeared. The... Oh, dear God. This is not what I need right now. I need a clear vision of the battle so I know what to do. How can I have a clear vision if I can't see shit? Okay, okay. I'll calm down. I'm going to calm down. I have an idea. I'll save a game. Save a game. ERS underscore 1964 underscore 05 underscore 04 underscore 64. Okay, we got that? Good. Now it's time to load that game and hope that works. Did I set my timer? I did. Okay. It just turned off for whatever reason. Probably open up another app. Yeah, that's right. I was looking up Twilight Zone in Russian. Russian brother. 
That was not. A, that was not. That was a horrible imitation of a Russian accent. Hello. Nope, I still can't see those fuckers. What the fuck? Did did I press something? Can I see any troops? Okay. T debug. Tag. Ka. Can they see my troops? Or can I see my troops in them? Nope! Okay, well. Um. So these fucking ant. T debug. What did I do? Okay, we got four guys. New recruits to the army. Fresh blood. Just some general, all around, nice looking guys. Okay, you fight them, make sure he can go ahead and reinforce there, I guess. Oh no, I can't really see shit right now. Am I gonna need to relaunch my game for this to work? I mean, fucking maybe. Okay, Aryans versus Berzniki. Vladimir did not repuppet them, so they are on their own. And they might have the advantage, honestly. Oh, Jesus. This still is one, one fucking, what you call it, infrastructure. So that's not nice. And I guess there are troops here now, though I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell. Okay, so we're moving up a bit. We're crossing the river. That's nice. So I said I can see my own divisions, but they literally cannot are not incapable of seeing jack diddly shit else. Are there bo are there troops in Nova Sibirsk? I don't know. I can't see them. Ah, all right, just breathe in, breathe out. Okay. I'll let them fight against you. You right here. Then pound them. We don't even need to see their fucking division, see? Easy clap. Or maybe it isn't. There might be troops coming. I don't know. I can't see them. There we go. Kant's has been is about to be taken. Is that it? And onwards ran the river of anarchy. Ah, oh, I'd say po I'd ask people to put poggers in chat, but this isn't live. I also might actually have a solution, but you know. All right, let's go ahead and integrate. Integrate const. And so be an expansion. Put down anarchy. Hmm. Spicy. Okay, we'll probably work on the People's Revolutionary Council next. Hopefully that won't be my downfall and Nova Sibirsk w w wasn't just waiting for me to do that. I'll cut down the artillery production for now. Let's do a bit of anti-tank, I guess. That might be, might, might be the worst idea. Yeah. Uh, still more honorable than Yagoda's Eastern Soviet remnants. Silev's Red Army units must still be defeated if a republic is to recapture all of Central Siberia. That works with me. Now, we won't exactly be able to see their troops, but they don't exactly have many. 
for me to worry about. Work in Shakola. Shaposhnikov first dreamed up his contingency scenario during the old CSR days, back when the People's Revolutionary Council was the last bit of land not claimed by either the Republic or Yugoda's Eastern Soviet. Back then, the assumption had been that the rising CSR would be able to complete its conquest of all of Central Siberia. The Marshal sighed, smiled. How foolishly short-sighted. Undermining Vasily... Vasilevsky and the Soviet remnants had never been in question, however. Many observants had mocked the ambitions of the underarmed Mongolian Red Army remnants and of the understrength light tank division that Vasilyev had united in his PRC. Keeping a low profile, Vasilyev had the last laugh when his biggest rival in the Far East and Central Siberia had torn themselves apart. The state of execution had, had let the PRC thrive, and the tenacious Red soldiers had clung on to their land, even in the face of the Almighty Spear. Their goal was admirable of helping the Mongols fight to their, for their homeland and reforging the Soviet Union kinder to its people. Shaposhnikov admired their courage and determination. Those qualities, sadly, had also made them a threat to the Republic. Vasilyev's army had to be defeated in the field. Well, I'm sorry, my friends. We'll treat the Mongols well, though. Don't worry. We won't do anything to hurt you guys. Oh, what is happening? I mean, now if my game crashes, I guess I can just reload a save and hopefully that'll fix my issue. Oh, Trekkie Dick is out. We got Johnny K in the office now, the first Catholic president. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to him. Let me check the Siberian plan. We're doing pretty good all around, I'd say. I'm happy with that. Um, industrial investment. External investment. So let's do some industrial investment. There we go. God, I'm, this is going great. I'm really enjoying this, I gotta say. Like, over in, like, a Vyatka, your industrial base is not the best. And that's a fun little challenging start. But, it's also, you don't feel like you're going anywhere in the early game. This feels really productive, like I'm actually doing stuff. Humanists. Let's try to, yeah, let's... Increase our authority. There we go. Alright, let's see. Are there any troops here? It doesn't look like it, but I can't tell. Oh, there's one guy in... Olgi. Um... Vyaka versus Berzniki. I guess we'll see, uh... Who takes it first? My money's on the Aryans. The Brotherhood. Ah. No divisions in basic training. Oh, no! We'll train four more guys at a time. Rest are not kind to dual authorities. There we go. Get moving. I said move. Can we just take... Kizzle? Oh. In the end, victory in the field had broken the back of the famed Siberian Black Army. The anarchist soldiers had fought long and hard. When their situation had grown impossible, however, the SBA had lost men as fast as melting spring snow. The Topskin Offensive Command... Combined with Shaposhnikov's suggested land reforms and food delivery had done much to peel away communes from the Black Army. The surrender of General Shaposhnikov and his men had rendered the Black Army remnants into a determined insurrection. 
Tomx's generals urged their men on, isolating hostile communes and slowly forming a grid of pacified territory within the region. The capture of Chancellor Krashnup Bevtev was the Republican Army's highest priority, a culmination of the final fight to eradicate anarchist ideology. The dedicated anarchist ideologue remained defiant until the end, unwilling to accept the offer of amnesty. Krishnup Pevtev died with his last companions, cornered in a forest safe house in the north. The men and women fought to the last bullet, refusing to grant their Republican foes any legitimacy. The martyrdom of Krishnup no Pitev echoed through the former free territory, and for a moment it seemed the insurrection might be sparked anew. But as loved ones But as loved as the counselor had been, the communes thought the, throughout the region were exhausted by a decade of conflict. The Republican army took care to listen to their grievances and brought food for the poorest. Perhaps their leader would have cast his judgment on them for willingly accepting servitude to the invading state. The peasants hoped the counselor would have found in himself a strength to forgive them. General Sh Shepinov's trial is due to begin soon. He's expected to argue that he merely wanted to protect local citizens from endless violence, as had all other captured separatists, and Tump's rumors abound of a reduced sentence meant to reward him for agreeing to end the bloodshed and give back the Eastern Territories a sense of normalcy. The Republic forgives, but not forget. Well, we took out the, uh, Anarchist. Corn time should go pretty quickly after this. Borman's Conquered Spear. Oh, no. Well, we'll see what happens there. I mean, as long as we take Hydric. As long as my game doesn't end. I don't care too much from there. Actually, Goring might not be the best. So I take it back. And actually, it looks like Goring is kind of... Pushing... Shit, Goring. Oh, okay. Okay, Mexico is going to be favoring the fucking Japanese. That's weird. Okay, Borman, the high... The Hydric is down, so it's just goring the Borman, really. Uh, Borman is starting to push back, so it might not be as a... It's still up in the air. We'll see what happens. Ooh, we can raid and loot. We can get more um, stuff of our loot. What do we want to work on? Let me see. Research facilities. Probably our power tools. Or maybe our industrial expertise. Now let's import some new equipment. Dick and Kizkel. Kaisel, however you say it. Oh no. Fuck. Johnny's dead. So bye bye, Miss American Pie. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee. Oh, there's a guy there, apparently. I couldn't tell. I can't tell anything anymore. Is there a guy there? It doesn't look like it, so let's move before a guy magically appears. And that's... that's probably gonna be enough, right? We'll see. It says no, but I'm a bit more optimistic. We'll probably take Altai soon, and if not, we'll take, uh, Will you Stay? And that will help, probably. Be the last drop in the bucket, so to speak. And with that, yep, their last thoughts were of home and the people they loved. Oh, we can integrate Tuva. 
That's really about it, apparently, though. Fate of the Reds. We'll get working on that, and then we'll go ahead, frontline Nova Sibirsk. Sibirsk. The, the guys who really started this... Um, do I want to get working on tanks, maybe? Sure. Work on some tanks, maybe some fighters, too. Yeah, some fighters. We're doing good. Now I just gotta see how many troops they might have from 2 to 10. So we have them. On lock. Who isn't... Right. Um, well, we don't even need them at their imports anymore, so... I'm not worried about that. All right, Plan the Athens. And Fez, I guess. It's time for the Republic to turn its attention towards the separatists of so-called Federation of Novosibirsk in Altay. The Porcelain La Junta must be defeated if our Republic is to endure. Marshal Shaposhnikov in his role chief of the Republic's army stood in a crowded room. Tomsk's top brass, as well as a few high-ranking civilians, had been assembled to discuss the final steps in the prepared invasion of the Federation of Novosibirsk and Altai. Between Tomsk and its target stood a mixture of plains and woodlands. Greatest obstacles of all would be the Old River. The city of Novosibirsk itself was exposed on the right flank of the river, but any commander worth their assault would keep large reserves west of the river ready to attempt to relieve any besieged city. An important secondary target was the Altai region as north capital. Barnaul? 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 I don't know. At the moment, the southern part of the Novo Subversa Altai Federation, Barnaul and its surroundings had been some of the best farmland of a central Siberian Republic, as well as a crucial railway junction. Capturing it would be a great morale coup, perhaps fatally weakening the opposition. Some generals droned on on explanation to an envoy from the Ministry of War. Shaposhnikov tried to pay attention. His heart wasn't in it. He had served with Pokrishkin, Novosibirsk's strongman. The enemy officers were dra damn traitors, yet they were also damn fine commanders. Neither the city of Novosibirsk nor the plains of Altai would be ceded easily. Over land and in the skies, the Siberian Falcon and his associates would wage a determined opposition. Yet they must fall if the Republic is to live. Ah. Damn. So we probably have troops somewhere. I just gotta zoom in very closely to see them. We have maybe one guy there. Maybe 50. I don't know. Probably not 50, but who knows. We have a guy there. And a guy there, apparently. Yeah, the city is uh, exposed, so we can just go and capture it. But the question is whether or not that's going to be enough to just be done. Which I'm not overly optimistic about. Maybe I could be more if I could see what the fuck is going on, but I can't. So, yeah. Let's get working on some bonuses for our artillery. Seems available. Um, not too much. I think we just save PP. And then get ready to work on the um, war plan. Oh, okay, so we're going to war with St. George. Which is interesting because they can actually get... Well, I guess we're not taking the shot. And then they can... They can just get them immediately. Oh, there's a father. Right on our border, too. Alright, Borman has won the Civil War, it seems. Oh. Oh. Poor Viat. Poor Viatka. That's not nice. 
Foreman wins. Security is restored to Germany. Apparently we could raid these guys, but um, I think we're above that at this point. I mean, we've always been above. We didn't do much raiding to begin with, but, you know, what I mean. Ah, there we go. Forwards into battle. That means go. I didn't do an offensive line. That's the problem. Okay. Yeah. I go figure. They need to know where they're going to keep going. The soldiers of the PRC had expected death or exile at the end of their lost war. Many were pleasantly surprised to find forgiveness from the Republican army. The PRC's higher-ups were tried in Tomsk. The prosecution against them was not as aggressive as it had been against defeat its separatists. The men of the PRC had broken no laws of the CSR by staying true to their old allegiance. Nor had they joined in Yagata's war of aggression to destroy the Republic. The prosecutors noted that the Red Army remnants were still illegally occupying land claimed by the CSR. This did not warrant, however, trees and charges as had been used before. The common soldiers and officers were offered to join the Republican Army. This was a tempting offer to many. War was their craft, and the Republic seemed honorable men intent on helping Russia. Oh. Hold on. Others found the humiliation of joining their enemies too much to bear. They had fought for Veselevsky who now risked a length, lengthy, uh, lengthy prison sentence. They had fought for communism, not the restoration of a shaky capitalist regime. The PRC came to a bittersweet end, torn apart by the public's mercy. Old comrades said goodbye to one another, as did half of the men gave up their swords, while the other half agreed to be deployed away from Mongolia. Many Mongolian soldiers vanished without a ward into the border with Mongolia, seeking to continue their own fights. They would miss the Russian brothers-in-arms. For many, the war was over. Well, so is this video. So, uh, we can relate. Thank you for watching. As always, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more uploads every weekday. So, every, as, uh, every Saturday, if you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything of sort, leave in the comments section below. I read all the comments I get, and I appreciate any and all feedback you kind of folks might have for me. If you want to send a few bucks my way, I have a Patreon. You can check out down the link below. Um, I, I don't really make money off any of these videos, so it's Patreon's the only real way I can make money. So if you, um, if you have some spare dollars and you wouldn't mind sending them my way, I'd appreciate it. If you can't or you don't want to, I, I get it. But I'd at least uh, appreciate the thought. Anyway, thank you all for watching as always. Oh, I have a Discord if you want to check it out. Chat, play games, stuff, grand, top in general. And I also have a, um, a Twitch channel, which I film series like these live. Not this one exactly, but series in general live so if you want to check that out I, you can check it out in the link in the description below anyhow that's it for now folks thank you for watching as always my name has been dogwood 333 and i'll see you guys next time goodbye